find Cortez and get him to explain what the hell's going on. Insane or not, he's the only person I can talk to about this. It's a rubber ducky, helplessly trapped under that rusty old grill. Good morning. Please tell me last night was a dream, April. I don't know what it was. I wish there was an explanation. But both you and Mickey, we all saw the same thing, didn't we? Not a dream, not a hallucination, but what? Weird things have been happening lately. I have noticed. This isn't the first time. What other weird things have happened lately? Little things, like movement in the corner of your eye that's gone when you turn your head. And noises, the kind you're not supposed to hear in the city. Animal noises. Wild animals. And once, this was very early in the morning, mind, a few days ago, I looked down into the canal and saw what looked like an underwater city. As I looked at it, it dissolved into ripples of water. Scary. You're telling me, darling. I'm scared of cockroaches, for God's sake. What do you think this does to my nerves? Have you seen Cortez today? No, darling. I don't think he's around. Do you have any idea where Cortez is? Sorry, he could be anywhere. Well, he does enjoy going uptown to watch old movies in some revival cinema, but where that is, I wouldn't know. Who'd know? Perhaps Zack. He is, after all, the self-appointed film expert around here. You should talk to him, darling. Great. Zack. My very best friend in the whole wide world. Could you tell Cortez I'm looking for him? Certainly, darling. If I happen to see him. 
Thanks. I have to get going. Take care of yourself out there, darling. I never imagined I'd be doing this in a million years. Well, well, what do you know? The princess comes knocking after all. Don't get your hopes up. I think you're the one who's got her hopes up, babe. And you better hope I don't slam this door in your face. Just do me one favor first, okay? Well, give me a reason to, babe. A reason? You want a reason? Okay. What about a date? Yeah. Good. Tonight. Uh, sure. Tonight. I'll meet you at the... Pavilion, was it? And, uh, are you gonna put out? What? I mean, if I'm gonna use my VIP passes and my pills, babe, I just gotta know if it'll be worth it or not. You on? We'll see, Zack. Eh, uh, just don't do a Houdini and vanish on me, babe. If you're a no-show and I wait around for you all night, I end up looking like an asshole. And that wouldn't make me very happy. I'll be a good girl and show. Smart. So, uh, what do you want to know? You know where I can find Cortez. Cortez, yeah? I knew there was something going on between you guys. Don't be ridiculous, Zack. It's not what you think. Whatever. Hey, like I give a shit? You're with me tonight, and by tomorrow morning, I don't think you'll find that old creep so appealing anymore. So, where's Cortez? Uh, when he's not outside reading or whatever the hell he does, he's usually at the Mercury Theater. They show old movies on real celluloid stock through a projector, like in the fucking Middle Ages. Where is this theater located? I don't remember the street it's on. It's been ages since I was there last. But you'll find it if you head out the East Gateway from Metro Circle. It's close to the Radio Power Building, and there are tons of adult stores in the area. Actually, if you're not too busy, you could pick up something for us to watch tonight. Something really filthy. Zack, I don't think... Hey, whatever. I was just kidding, yeah? Babe, you got a major bug up your ass. Get a fucking sense of humor, yeah? I'll keep that in mind. Thanks for the tip... and the info. Just be at the pavilion by ten, okay? I don't like waiting around for babies like you. Got a million better things to do. And it wouldn't be a good idea for you to ditch me. Not a good idea at all.
know that duck. Bon voyage, ducky! It's a rubber ducky. It looks disturbingly familiar. But how the heck did it get all the way over here? It's a band-aid. How did that get there? Last I remember, the seagull had pecked a hole in the duck. Weird. There's a high voltage cable running parallel with the rail, and something's gotten stuck between them. It looks like a large iron key. something tight to keep the clamp open. When I was a wee lass, I tried fishing a couple of times in the pond behind my house, but I never caught anything. I hope my luck's improved. Pretty cool catch.
It's a large iron key. Would you believe this is the first thing I saw when I came to Newport? Big city? Gotta love it. This guy looks like he works at the theater. Excuse me. Yes, huh? Oh, geez. Hold on there one second, lady. Dang, Marquis. Light up. Good. Now stay that way, you hear? Do you work at the theater? Yes, um. I'm Freddie. Freddie Mellon. My mama, Mrs. Dottie Mellon, she owns the theater. Yep, I reckon she does, uh-huh. She owns it. And she'd be running it by her own self, like a, a real proprietor. I reckon I help out some, of course. Yup. And what do you do, sir? I'm the usher. And I also takes care of sweeping and cleaning up after the show. My mama, Mrs. Dottie Mellon, she says she reckon I'm a regular jack of all trades. I tell you what, I think she's right about that, uh huh. Is the theater open now? No, I reckon it ain't, lady. It don't open till this evening. Ain't nobody in there either. I reckon that wouldn't be legal. Do you know a man called Cortez? No. I can't say as I does, lady. I ain't never met him. Now, I reckon I'd like to get on with my sweeping, uh huh? But I'm supposed to meet him here. Are you sure you don't know him? Look, lady. I reckon you, you should just mind your own bee's knees and get. I told you, I ain't seen Cortez today. You said you didn't know Cortez. I, I reckon I don't know nobody by that name, so, so I tell you what. I'd mighty appreciate it if, if you'd stop bothering me and let me get on with my work. Jesus, Mary, and baby Joseph, I reckon the whole dang world is f wants to find Cortez today. Thanks, anyway. Yes, um. I'll tell you what. 
You go on now. And let Freddie Mellon do his sweeping before his mama, Mrs. Dotty Mellon, get all P.I.S.T. off. Hi there. Having fun? Didn't your mother teach you not to talk to strangers? Yeah, she did. Then what are you doing here? Get lost. Are you on the job? On the job? What do you mean, on the job? You know, an assignment, stakeout, undercover operation. I suggest you get the hell out of here now, ma'am, before things get ugly. Was that a threat? Are you threatening me? Yes, I am. Hello again. Christ, don't you ever quit? What is it now? Why are you dressed like a cop? What do you mean, why am I dressed like a... Hey, wait a second, what's it to you? Just trying to do my bit for the boys in blue, sir. You look like a cop, so if you're on a stakeout or something, you should try to blend in a little more. Go native! Yeah, how? I don't know. But that trench coat, it sort of gives it away. Perhaps a pair of blue jeans and one of those I'm with stupid t-shirts might help. Hold on, let me get this down right. Hey, wait a second, what am I doing? Who the hell do you think you are? The NPD fashion consultant? Is that supposed to be funny, ma'am? Are you a comedian or something? Because I'm not laughing. I'm not even smiling, am I? Now get your ass out of here and don't bother me again. Is that a threat? Damn right it's a threat. Hello again. Christ, don't you ever quit. What is it now? Don't you get tired of hanging around here all day long? No, ma'am. So you're completely fine. There's nothing you'd want. That's right. Nothing at all? Nothing at all. Not even a bite to eat? Just had a full lunch, ma'am. Thanks for asking. So you just had lunch? That's right. That cool cow. What did you have? A triple whammy cow patty with a side order of grease onions and a lard bingo cola. No ice. What about fries? And a double order of cheese and fried taters, yeah. Tastiest damn fries you're ever likely to find. Soaking in melted goat cheese. And you had this... when? Well, about an hour ago. And you don't feel, um, the urge to go? No, ma'am, no. My bowels are genetically enhanced and require only perfunctory attention. The burger filled you up good? You don't have the munchies? Well, now you mention it, I have a craving for sweets. I didn't have time for my usual cool cow strawberry pie with whipped cream chocolate sauce and a scoop of ice cream. Wait a second. What am I telling you all this for? Who the hell are you anyway? Get out of here, ma'am. Right this minute or else... Is this a threat? I think that was a threat. A very serious one, ma'am. Lady, don't you keep playing with that thing now, you hear? Leave it be. Green is. Would you like a candy? Hey, yeah. That'll hit the spot. What the hell? The taste! I'm sick 
sickening. I feel kind of... Christ! Hey, what... What the hell do you think you're doing? Did you just throw a rock at my head? Now, I tell you what. You shouldn't have done that. I reckon that was a bad mistake. <laughs> you should have seen him run, lady. I reckon I ain't never seen nobody run that fast. And he was clutching at his buttocks like he had the runs or something. <laughs> he, he even lost his stupid old hat in the gutter. <laughs> I ain't never seen anything that funny in a while. It's that detective guy's hat. He must have lost it running away from Freddie Mellon. Some kind of keyhole. Dang, Marquis, light up! Hell, it gone dead on me now. I'm going to have to fix that sign proper this time round, uh-huh. I just need me a ladder and some tools from the basement.
There's no doorknob. It's impossible to open it from this side. It reminds me of something, but I just can't put my finger on it. I feel an uncontrollable urge to raise my hands, though. The shadow's being cast by those garbage bags. When's the last time somebody picked up the garbage? Smells like moldy caramel popcorn and bingo cherry cola. Disgusting! work a lot better if I open the can first. Chased you earlier. Freddy, you'll do the monkey for you right now if, if that's what you want, uh huh? He'll do the monkey until you ask him to stop, I reckon, uh huh? Uh huh? Uh huh? Uh -huh. Yeah, you! Hands up! Spread your legs! And do the monkey! You have no idea what I went through to find you. First... Do you like movies? Sure. Who doesn't? Wait a second. I was trying to tell you that... I don't much like modern movies myself. They're either too loud and expensive or too obscure and self-indulgent. But old movies, really old movies, have a charm and a simplicity that appeals to me. Listen, please don't interrupt me again. It's starting to piss me off. Did you know? 
But I have never interrupted you, unless I've had something important to say, of course. But go ahead. What is it you wanted to talk about? Why did you make me search all over the city for you? Search for me? I've been here for hours, senorita. I haven't moved. The question ought to be, what made you go out of your way to find me? I knew you would come sooner or later. We agreed to meet this morning, no remember? Did you know that? As I remember it, there was no, no agreement. I said tomorrow, no but you refused. I assumed you weren't interested. I apologize for making myself unavailable, however. Don't give me that. You wanted me to come looking for you again. Actually, no, I... I had to lay low for a few hours. Does it have anything to do with the cop that was staking this place out? No. So it was a good thing I didn't stick my head out the door to look for you then, no? He's gone now. Are you in some kind of trouble with the police? Wait, don't tell me. Immigration. No, senorita. Not the police. There are bigger players than the police. I don't want to know. I'm not getting mixed up with the mob or gangs or anything like that. There's not much you want to be mixed up in at all, is there? My life's complicated enough as it is, Mr. Cortez. I don't even know what I'm doing here. Answers. You want, you need answers. You keep telling me that, but you never give me any answers. Just more questions. Like, who's out to get you? What's going on with me? How come you know so much about me? I plan to answer all your questions today, April. By the time you go to sleep tonight, your world will have changed. And nothing will ever be the same. You're just being cryptic again. It's like soap opera sex. Lots of boring dialogue, and when they finally go to bed, everything's dark and covered by blankets. You want the full Monty, then? Come with me. Come outside. No more talk. I will show you the truth. It's getting closer. They will be here soon. Soon enough. This is probably as good a place as any. At least there's no one around to see, except rats. To see what? Stand back, senorita. What for? What are you doing? Why, Alice? I'm sending you through the looking glass. What is that? Please tell me it's a hologram. It's a mirror to reflect your dreams. I don't see anything, just light. Oh, you have to step through. Step through that? Oh no, I don't think so. This is the moment of decision, April. All time, past and present, revolves around this moment. The destiny of worlds is in your hands. But you must make the choice on your own. La vida es corta. You must decide how to live it best. I'm not sure what I should do. I understand. It's a difficult decision. Because whatever you do, your life will change forever. So take your time. Think about it. Don't rush into a decision you're not ready to make. Ready to step through the looking glass? All right. I'll do it. Vamos. Enter the light. Don't say that. It sounds too ominous. Just... Tell me what's gonna happen. 
You're about to take the first step on the longest journey of your life. But don't worry. I'll be waiting right here. I must be insane to do this. Yes, it's pretty much a given. Oh, I almost forgot. When you're ready to come back, pay a visit to a friend of mine called Westhouse, Brian Westhouse. child, and may the balance protect you. Cortez? Cortez! I have a bad feeling about this. Wait. What was the name Cortez told me to remember? Westhouse? Brian Westhouse? I think that was it. Cortez said to look him up when I wanted to go home. Well, I want to go home now. Hello? Hi. Et tu? Emilie, tu vas? Do you speak English? Parlez-vous français? Habla espagnol? Paku, sta kayan paras, inomalante candra, ton maris oretheasi ton. Aku kandi, good. Niranton avoch, sank al coda magic. Torante, salhe. Navin, all tongue. Av orta i beginning, parasintin iu. You have theesa i magiki, Sara. I the knowledge, aritua ya ai tui by generations e umani. Knowledge of all tongue. Now you have allowed the magic to enter your heart, and the knowledge of all tongue, ever present but dormant, to guide your ears and your tongue. I... I understand you. You speak English? Why didn't you just tell me straight away? <laughs> no, child. I do not speak English. I speak Naven, all tongue, the common language of Arcadia. 
Arcadia? Wait a second. How did I get here? What is this place and who the hell are you? Oh, my manners have abandoned me yet again. I'm afraid my preoccupation with ancient texts and the company of my fellow fathers have left me unequipped with the grace of social intercourse. Meaning what? That I have been rude. My name, dear child, is Tobias Grensret, and I am the Vestrum of the Sentinel, the Order of the Balance. We are the Fathers. Ah... Uh, okay. I'm April. April Ryan. I take it this is your first shift, your first passage through the Divide? I have no idea what you're talking about, but I guess this is my first shift. I just... Then I will explain everything. Someone must. You are without guidance, without a mentor. Mentor? There's this guy Cortez. He assisted me, told me about magic and truth and dreams and portals. Crazy stuff. Well, it seemed crazy at the time, although now I don't... Cortez? Ah, yes, Cortez. Very good, very good. Then come, let us proceed. Let me show you Mercuria, the grandest city of all ages. Explore Marcuria, April. See the sights, meet the people, and then, when you are ready, return to the temple. I will answer whatever questions you may have then. Excuse me, Vestrum Tobias? Tobias, just call me Tobias, please. I require no ceremony from a distinguished guest such as yourself. Did you enjoy the sights? I don't know. I'm overwhelmed. Walking around out there, seeing with my own two eyes things that can't possibly exist. I kept thinking, it's all a dream. I'll wake up at any moment now and everything will return to normal. But then I realized, I'm still here. It's real. I can touch it. I can smell it. And you know what? It doesn't make sense. Nothing makes sense here. Magic, alien creatures, parallel worlds. I don't believe in those things. I don't believe in fairy tales. In your world, in Stark, there is no room for magic. That is, and always has been, the curse of science, the fallibility of logic and order. They leave no room for the imagination. If it does not fit into the narrow perception of the laws of nature that your world adheres to, it's a fairy tale. But then, magic has its downsides too. It's unpredictable. It invites chaos. It puts the balance in peril in a way that science alone never could. I keep hearing about the Balance, and about Stark, and Arcadia, and... This is probably gonna sound strange to you, but I'm clueless. I have no idea what this place is, or what I'm doing here, or... All I know is that something strange is happening in... in my world, I guess. 
I had dreams, and the dreams felt so real, and then things started happening in real life, too. Things that shouldn't... couldn't happen, and I... I think I will begin at the very beginning. I believe that is why you were sent here. To learn, to understand, to see for yourself. Like you said, you cannot believe in this place. Well, you will. After you have learned the truth, you will. Come with me, and I will tell you the story of Earth as your books never have. And when your eyes and ears are open to the truth, perhaps your mind will follow. We can only hope. Come. This is the true story of the balance. As observed by the Sentinel, the Order of the Balance, the Fathers. The Sentinel Minstrum committed this story to the pages of the scriptures and to these temple walls thousands of years ago so that coming generations could learn and understand their past and their future. The wall paintings we are looking at became known as the murals of the balance. And it is through these images that I will recount our common history to you, April Ryan. The story begins and ends here, with this mural. Ages ago and in ages to come, the Earth was one and magic and science existed side by side in nature and in all people. There was balance, and there was harmony. You're saying there was just one world then? One world, one Earth. Magic and science in balance with each other, within each and every living creature. The power to make the stars dance and to create life itself was within our grasp. But then, humankind began to exploit this divine power of two, and they saw fit to use it for their own selfish purposes. The balance of the cosmos was in peril. Unless something was done, unless man was humbled and learned to fear the power he wrought over cosmos, the twilight of chaos would fall upon Earth. It had happened before, in distant times and on distant worlds, and it would happen again. And every man, woman, and child of every people and every race would be devoured by the coming apocalypse. We were given a visitation then. The drag kin, having lived among us for untold generations, rose to offer their guidance and assistance in preserving the balance on our world. The Drag? I think I've heard that name before. Drykin, Draken, Dragons, whichever name they go by, they remain the eternal servants and custodians of the balance. There were four of them here on Earth, and of the four, one who would found the Order of the Balance, the Sentinel. The first Minstrum were instructed that magic and science would have to be separated before the balance collapsed and brought untold disaster. Earth would have to be split in two equal parts. Arcadia and Stark. Magic and science. Chaos and order. The first Sentinel were counted 13. Six scientists, six magicians, and one who was between. The Drag Kin, our mentor, our custodian, our learned guide. Both magic and science were needed to perform this most difficult of tasks. To split a world in two. To create two worlds from one. Wasn't the use of that kind of power dangerous to the balance? Yes. And so for this purpose, they built a tower to channel their powers and focus them on the divide that they would create. The kin had brought a disc with them. A disc forged in the fire of their world. Placed at the base of the tower, and the epicenter of the divide, the disc and the tower would become one. A conduit for the flow of magic and science. At the appointed hour, 
The Thirteen came to the tower, and with them a woman, whose destiny was decided by the purpose to which she had been born. She would be the first guardian, the human protector of the balance, who would stay in the tower for a thousand years to watch over the two worlds, and to ensure that the flows of magic and science were always equal. And so the ritual began. One world was to become two, separated by the balance, and each world visible to the other only by way of dreams. Who was ushered into which world was not an arbitrary choice, nor one taken lightly. For the magical creatures, the choice was simple. They had to go to Arcadia. Their kind would not survive in Stark. But for others, families were torn apart, lovers separated and friends lost for all eternity. Encircled by the Twelve and the One, and the One who would be Guardian, the disk at the base of the tower began to spin faster and faster as more and more power flowed through it until it was a blur. Darkness enveloped the tower, but the disk glowed brighter and brighter. Reality turned, and in one moment, a new reality had been created and two new worlds born. In the tower there was silence. The original disk had disappeared and in its place was a smaller counterpart, a similar yet different disk. Around and outside the tower, the world looked different. They were now between Stark and Arcadia, between reality and dream. This was the realm of the Balance and of the Guardian, and it would be her home for the next 1,000 years. The one who was kin picked up the disk and said, this disk is a counterpart to the original disk, which has now become this realm, and the key to which has been split and divided in four. The key is the disk, and the disk is this realm. This mystified the Twelve, and the one who was kin continued. Know only this. The Guardian's realm cannot be broken unless the disk is broken but nor can it be repaired without the disk being repaired. The four pieces that is the key will be given to the six of you who are to be taken to Arcadia for safekeeping. Yet the key will never be complete, he went on. Without the precious stones that adorn each piece, I will keep one, and my fellow kin, the three others. Should the day come when this realm must be repaired, or the worlds reunited, and that day will come. You will assemble the disk, and the kin will come together one last time. With that, six of the thirteen went to Arcadia, and six to Stark, and the one who would be guardian ascended to the throne. Witness the mural, where her dreams and hopes, her very soul, were locked away in the disk. In service of the balance, these traits were nothing but barriers. Through new eyes, the imbalance between the worlds was as clear as the stars themselves to the Guardian. And with one thought, she channeled chaos from Arcadia and logic from Stark into the disk and redistributed the power wherever it was needed. A new era had begun, the era of the Guardian. After they left the tower, two of the Drakkin went to Stark, the other two to Arcadia. The six who came to each world started what is now known as the Sentinel, the Order of the Balance. But while in Arcadia the Sentinel thrived, in Stark they did not. In Stark the memories of magic and the balance could not survive in the face of the new reality of natural laws of logic and of science. And soon, very soon, Arcadia became nothing more than legend, a myth, tales of fairies to recount to impressionable children, and stories to frighten and entertain around a fire. And while dreams still brought sights and sounds of Arcadia to those asleep and stark, they were discounted as mere dreams and nothing more. 
So that's it? We forgot about our past and about Arcadia? And that's the way things are? Then what's wrong with that? And why does magic from Arcadia seem to have begun leaking through to Stark? That is another long story. But I can tell that you are tired of stories, and so I shall be brief. As I told you, while in Arcadia, the Sentinel grew in numbers and in strength. In Stark, while flourishing for a brief time, they were soon diminished and powerless. Some of the Stark Sentinel did not take kindly to this, and they berated the Arcadian Sentinel for their politics and teachings. The Stark Sentinel wanted people to work towards reunification, while their brothers did not. So the inevitable soon came to pass, and the Stark Sentinel parted ways with their Arcadian brothers, and named themselves the Vanguard. And while at first their philosophy was not so different from ours, over the years it changed radically. The Vanguard wanted the Divide torn down, the worlds reunited, and the return to what they called the Glorious Ages, when humankind could control the forces of Cosmos. But first they needed their own servant in charge of the balance, their own guardian. Now, every 1,000 years, a new guardian took the place of the old one, because no one can be separated from their souls for any longer than a 1,000 years. Every 1,000 years, a new guardian was born. The balance provided the seed from which a new fruit grew. But now, it has been 200 years since the previous guardian, the 12th guardian, was to be replaced. Every new child born to the balance has been taken away by the vanguard to be studied in an attempt to control them. In every instance so far, they have failed. But the 12th guardian could wait no longer. Only a short time ago, the disk in the tower shattered, and the Guardian left his throne. The balance is now untended, and we have yet to find a new Guardian. Unless we do so, the Vanguard may get their chance. And they may be able to place their own puppet on the throne, to rule the balance according to their principles. And this we cannot allow. It will mean the end of Stark and Arcadia, and the dawn of an era of chaos. Now do you see? I understand the history. I can even accept it. But I don't understand why I'm here and what Cortez wants with me. The balance is in peril, April. The Guardian has abandoned his tower. He has disappeared. And there is no one to take his place. He must be reinstated to protect the balance until a new Guardian may be found. And what can I do? I'm nobody. I've just been having a lot of bad dreams. You are a strong shifter. I have not seen your like in my lifetime. A shifter? Someone capable of opening doors between worlds. A shift. A portal between the realms of Stark and Arcadia. Are you kidding? I didn't do anything. Cortez was the one who opened the... Shift, and he just waved his hands around in the air. I don't think I'd be capable of opening a portal even if I had a magic wand. Only a shifter's own power can allow her to travel. No one else can do this for her. Cortez only channeled your power to aid you. He would not be able to step through the shift himself. Even if that's true, I don't have any control over my... talent. Not yet. But in time, you will. How else do you intend to travel back to your world? God, I hadn't even thought about that yet. Can you help me? I'm afraid not. Even if I could shift, I would not be able to channel through you like Cortez did. So, I'm on my own? If you have any questions, I will do my best to answer them. But aside from that, yes. Yes, you are. That's so not cool. No, it has been unseasonably warm. If you don't mind, I will return to my studies now. Thank you for listening to an old man and his long stories. N no, thank you. 
It's starting to make a little bit of sense now. That is good news. Come see me again if you have any more questions. Excuse me. Do you know a man named Brian Westhouse? Westhouse? That old goat? Yes, unfortunately. What would you with him? I need to find him. I do not know where he lives. I hear somewhere on the outskirts of the city by the sea, but I cannot tell you any more than that. Who'd know about West House? His whereabouts? I do not understand what you would with him. He is rude, uncultured, and ignorant. Cortez told me to look him up. Well, I do not know where he lives or frequents, but someone at the market may. He trades merchandise there, and I think he collects maps of the Northlands. What do you know about Cortez? Your mentor? What has he told you about himself? Not much. Nothing, in fact. He's a complete mystery to me. To learn something about someone, the best way to go about it is to ask them yourself. There is nothing I can do to enlighten you. 
But who is he? He is who he is, what he is. If he has not told you himself, then perhaps he does not wish you to know. It would be improper for me to divulge his secrets. You're as bad as he is. No offense. It's just frustrating. I understand. The next time you see him, tell him what you have told me. Maybe he will tell you the truth, maybe he will not. It is his choice to make. Do you mind if I ask you some questions about Arcadia? I will try my best to answer any question you may have, April. What's the history of Arcadia? There is so much I do not know where to begin. In truth, it would be wiser to ask someone else, unless you wish to know about the Fathers, the Balance, or Mudhoppers. Mudhoppers? My secret passion. I study them. They are a most fascinating species. Most fascinating indeed. But I am not practically versed in the intricacies of history, I am sorry to say. What's Mercuria like? I have lived in this city all my life, and still it amazes me what a diverse, exciting, and wonderful place it is. Many have called Mercuria the Jewel of the Northlands, and they are right. But it is a diamond in the rough. A city this size can never be flawless. There are always shadows and people who hide in them. Lately the shadows have grown and darkened, and I fear for the future. But Mercuria is still a wonderful place to live. What else can you tell me about Mercuria? Mercuria is the capital of Ired, the unified country. And we are located on the southern coast of the Northlands, halfway between Tyran and Khorasan. Between the Snapjaw and the Gaintby, some might call it. Between the Embers and the Fire. Yet democracy and peace have reigned for thousands of years now, and although relations may at times be strained with our Tyran neighbors, the High Council are masters of diplomacy. And Lord Igvan Delen is a firm and just chief counselor of the Iredan flag. Tell me a little about Ired. Ired means both unification and assembly in Haitung, and many still call Ired the unified country, even though it is an age and a half since the lands of the north joined together in alliance. Ired stretches from the plains of Nedra in the north to the Great Sea in the south and from the territories of Tyran in the west to the thick woodlands in the east. It is populated by humans and Dolmare, Tyran and a number of other races. It is even said that a tribe of Venar have a ring of trees in Riverwood, though I am not sure that is anything but a myth. What are the Northlands? The Northlands is a collective term for all the lands north of the Great Sea and south of the border mountains, including Ired, Tyran, and Khorasan. Before, however, the word Northlands was used to describe this entire continent, including the territories north of the mountains and the icy wastes beyond that. Some still prefer the latter interpretation of the name. And to the people of the Southlands, anyone hailing from north of the Great Sea is a Northlander regardless. Thanks for the information. I'm glad I could assist you. How am I supposed to get back to Stark? The only way to get back is through a shift. You are a shifter, April, and the power to travel between worlds is within you. It might be within me, but it doesn't look like it's coming out anytime soon. I wish I could help you, but I cannot. You must find the path on your own. Who did you say I should see about West House? The map merchant that the market may know. There is one thing I must tell you, however. Few would know West House by his real name. In the city, he is known as the Rolling Man, because of his strange two-wheeled vehicle. A most dreadful and dangerous contraption if I ever saw one. A bicycle? 
Perhaps. It has a grotesque appearance, much like the West House himself. I'll see you later. You will? If you say so, then it must be true. tells me maps that he sells maps maps I got maps can I interest you in a map miss top-notch hand drawn in quality ink by skilled sunriders ain't no better in all the Northlands how much are your maps Depends, miss. I got a very nice one here of the Border Mountains for only six Aaron's fresh from the quill of a Sunrider. Maps, get your maps here. Do you sell maps of the city? Can't help you there, miss. The Guild of Tourism has monopoly on city maps. I can tell you're not from around here or you know that. Got tons of maps of all the Northlands, though, from the city of Tyron to the Bay of Fire. Maps! Where can I find the Guild of Tourism? They're close for the holidays. Sure, that makes sense. I'm looking for Brian Westhouse. Briar West of House? It's not on any of my maps, and I've never heard of it. Maps! It's a man, not a place, Mr. Brian Westhouse. I would most certainly remember a name as queer as that, and I don't. Get your maps while they're fresh. Can you tell me where the Rolling Man lives? Maybe, maybe not. Why? Because I need to find him. Sorry, Guild Rules. Uh, I'm not allowed to divulge any personal information about my customers. Maps! I really need to know where the Rolling Man lives. Sorry, can't do. Please? Pretty please? No, 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 young lady. Don't give me that doe-eyed look. Don't. Ah, blasted be the balance. You're giving me that doe-eyed look, aren't you? I still can't tell you, though. I got maps. Mind if I ask you a couple of questions? Yes, maps! Do you know Vestrum Tobias? Everyone knows Vestrum Tobias, girl. He's been an important part of this city for as long as I can remember. What can you tell me about him? The Vestrum is an honorable man, but a conservative one. And I don't know if he still has the best interests of the people at heart. Sometimes I think he worries too much about custom. The Sentinel have been our so-called protectors and keepers of the balance for so long we don't even think of it anymore. But now that the Vanguard are introducing a new way of thinking, new philosophies, I'm afraid the Sentinel will find their power diminish before too long. Their resistance to change will be their downfall. Mark my words, their downfall for certain. 
and Tobias, honorable man that he is, will be remembered as the captain who went down with his ship. How do you get along with your neighbors? The cup's handler? Stay away from him, miss. He takes great joy in robbing people's purses. You can't beat him, not without magic. And he doesn't allow magic at his table. How would he know if I did use magic? Oh, he's got one of those blasted talismans. They're always digging up magical artifacts in Chagagriel, and they sell them to dogs like him for a silver coin or two. Get a proper job, you son of a mole! What do you know about Stark? Land of wonders, strange customs, and machinery. Ah, to be in Stark. I'd give my right leg, well, perhaps not my right leg as such. You really need two sturdy legs to stand on in this business, or you'll find yourself... Um, uh, yes, uh, a grand place indeed, free of this blasted, chaotic, unpredictable magic does no good to anyone. Now, machines built by man, controlled by man, in servitude of man, that's the future, isn't it? Yes, the Vanguard may be a little unorthodox in their methods and teachings, but they're right about one thing. Stark and Arcadia belong together, not apart. What's Arcadia like? What can I say about a whole world, girl? It's a beautiful place, for sure, but we're stuck in the past. We don't look ahead, not like our cousins in Stark. Magic is all well and good, but it won't bring our world into the modern age, and Arcadia is untamed. It's wild and unpredictable. Good for the map business, sure, but not so good for productivity and expansion. No, oh, some people may consider our world a paradise. The Sentinel, for one, they'd prefer to keep it just the way it is. Me, I'd like to see some changes, and fast. Thanks for your help. No maps for me today, thanks. Fair enough, miss, but don't expect me to come running to your aid if you ever get lost in Riverwood. Without my maps, you'll probably end up a mole's dinner or worse. Maps! Please tell me where the Rolling Man lives. No, can't do, miss. Uh, I can't divulge personal information about my customers. You're late again! And you know what else? You're fired! Give me back the delivery list and get your sorry blue skin elsewhere! Hired hell. Bah! Never hire a Domari to do a human job. What are you gonna do now, without a delivery boy? And hire a new one, of course. Ah, uh, blasted be the balance. That means I'll have to pay the damn fee to the Guild of Merchants' damnation. Maybe I could help you out. You? How? I'm quick, honest, and reliable, and I've got a lot of experience in the service industry. Hmm, perhaps a female errand boy could work if the Guild of Merchants don't find out. I won't tell them if you don't. Mind the pay is not much, only a single errand per delivery, plus whatever tip the customer may see fit to give you. I'll take the job, if you want me. Agreed. Maybe you'll even bring in some new business. Here's the delivery list for today and your first map. It's for the captain of the White Dragon. Nebeve, I think his name is. You'll find him in the harbor. Oh, and remember to have the customers sign the delivery list. The guild are sticklers for protocol. No signature, no money, no new jobs. Bye now. Maps! Fresh, detailed, life-saving maps!
one map of the Sea of Songs to Captain Horatio Nebeve of the White Dragon. Interesting spelling. A map of... Shengegriel. Changangriel? Why can't these magical worlds have place names like Boston, London, or Kansas City? It's always like Loth this and Irid that. Like, cut back on the consonants already. One map of the Northlands to be delivered to Tom Lyak at the Journeyman Inn. Judging by his ungainly stance, I'd say he's a mariner pining for the sea. Ahoy there, matey! Pardon? Isn't that how you sailors greet each other? No. W what do you say, then? Usually, hello. And if it's sunny, nice day for it. We might even try a how are you today then, if we're feeling adventurous. But never, ever, ahoy. This is valuable information. Aye, matey, that it be. Is this the White Dragon? That's what the big white letters on the prow spell out. What do you think? I'm looking for the captain. Is he around? What would you with the captain of the White Dragon? I have a delivery for him, a map from the map merchant at the Temple Market. Aye. I be Captain Horatio Nebeve of the White Dragon, fastest vessel there ever was. 
Hand the map over, girl. With Jarl's blessing, the wind will return soon, and I can leave this accursed harbor for sunnier shores. Thank you. There's an errand for your trouble. Sign this, please. What is it? I need your signature to confirm that you've received the map. Map? What map? The one I just gave you. Oh, that one. Sorry, I never put my signature on a piece of paper. Please sign it or I won't get paid. I just gave you an errand. That should be enough to cover it, I. Eh? Forget the money. That's not why I need your signature. I need you to sign so that I can keep my job and hopefully find a way home. Sorry, but it brings bad luck to give a piece of yourself in that manner. A signature has untold powers. It's part of your soul. I can't sign away my soul. Who told you that signing a slip of paper is bad for your soul? I'm from Guyenne, and we're a spiritual people. Our souls are in balance with our bodies, and the great Mojal has taught us not to endanger this balance. Signing my name, giving a piece of myself in that manner, breeds corruption and imbalance within. And it pisses the Mojal off no end. And that's why you choose to make my life difficult? Hey, blame organized religion. You can't write, can you? Pardon? That's what this is all about. You can't write. Uh... So what? So what if I can't write? So what if I was born at sea and never spent more than a month ashore ever since? I still won't sign your accursed paper by Jal. Look, all you have to do is sign an X next to your name on the list. You can't trick the great Mojal. The Mojal's untrickable. That's not trickery. It's legally binding. I said no. Is there anything I can do to get you to sign? No. Well, yes. But, no. Look, Captain, I'm desperate here. I really, really need some kind of signature. Well, there's always music. What's music got to do with you signing my list? Nothing. But it distracts the Mojal. What are you talking about? Why would you need to distract the... the... Mojal? I can't sign when there's a chance the Mojal is watching. Music distracts the Mojal. Ergo, I can sign. But doesn't that mean the Mojal is always distracted? I mean, there's always music somewhere in the world. The Mojal has an eye and an ear for every acolyte and straying from the path can bring great wrath upon us. Granted, I know very little of the Mojal, but seriously, maybe you should look into alternative religions? Blasphemy! Besides, I only have to visit the temple once every two years, and the membership fees are quite reasonable. So, if I play some music, you'll sign? Aye. I'll give you that much. I'll be back. I don't doubt it for a second.
This guy's selling lobsters, crabs, eels, and... What the hell is that purple thing? That is so not appetizing. This guy's selling musical instruments. Most of these, I don't even recognize. But he's got a drum in there, and what looks like half a guitar, and a couple of... dried rabbit carcasses. Ugh. What's your, um, most affordable instrument? That's cute. The flute, right? And how much for the flute? I'm guessing that's one Aaron. I'll have the flute. That's one Aaron, isn't it? As luck would have it, I actually know how to play a flute. Not very well, but I'm sure the, uh, Mojal won't mind. I'm ready to play some music if you're ready to sign. Aye, go on. But don't stop until I'm done signing, or the Mojal will surely wreak vengeance on us both. Done. Here you go. And don't ever ask me to sign anything ever again. I can pretty much guarantee you that.
Right. Your next assignment is a map of Shangagriel to the Rolling Man. Hold on. Did you not ask me about him earlier today? Um... No. No, that wasn't me. That was somebody else. I could have sworn... Well, no matter. Uh, do you know how to get to the Rolling Man's house? I forget. Uh, let me explain, then. Now, pay attention, because this is complicated. He has chosen to live in the most inaccessible place in the city, but I guess he has his reasons. First, you head west off the marketplace on Oak until you get to a tiny little apothecary, Mrs. Cassop's Herbs and Oils, where you turn north on South Street, confusing that, for about four minutes of brisk walking. That's when you see a, a large grove of trees. It's a memorial to those who died in the last war with the tyrant back uh, the balance knows when. Can't see why they choose to remind us of that, where you'll turn left. That's west? No, left. That'll take you back south, but onto North Street instead. And that keeps you out of the Dalmari neighborhood. Down that way, nasty, nasty neighborhoods. Keep walking south or about, or was that north? Wait, wait, north on South Street, south on North Street, or the other way around. Anyway, find the Rose Bridge off uh, Irene Avenue and cross it. There's a river? No, just a bridge. The river disappeared 500 years ago. No one knows what happened to it. After you've crossed the bridge, you'll be on the western slopes of Mercuria. And that's where West House... I mean, the Rolling Man lives. No, far from it, but you need to pass through that part of Mercuria to get to the Rolling Man. Keep south and watch out for the livestock. They're likely to attack in that part of town. Eventually you'll get to a large circular square. That's where they used to hold executions back when the city was civilized. You call murder civilized? Better than locking people up for years, as any level-headed person would tell you. Our freedom cannot be curtailed. Real men choose the honor of death to the shame of incarceration. Yeah, sure you do. Circle around the square and head down Tendak for half a mile. Or should that be Parrick Lane? Yes, Parrick Lane. Head west on Parrick Lane for uh, half a mile. Then turn right at the Maiden's Honor Tavern. North again? Uh, no, west. Uh, Parrick Lane has a few twists and turns. Anyway, you should now be able to see the Ivory Tower. Is it a big tower? No, only about five feet tall, but it's ivory, straight from the coast of the Southlands, bravely cut from the drooling jaws of the gruesome Kandar. Big creature, four legs, large ears, long snout, sort of grayish in color? Yes, the horror of the Southlands. Many a brave hunter has fallen victim to its ravaging hunger. Good grief. Okay, then what? Pass by the tower to the edge of the cliff and look down. The rolling man has built his home on the cliffside. It's a wonder he's not been washed away by the storms. <laughs> I hope I got all that. Basically, go west until I hit the edge, right? Uh, yes, that would be correct. Talk with the man. Hello, Mr. Westhouse? Damn, Mason, what is it now? Oh. oh. 
<clears throat> Guess you're not, uh, you're not calling on behalf of that son of a bitch Sanya, are you? Sorry, I don't know who... No, no, that's very unlikely. From what I hear, he doesn't much enjoy the company of women. Well, who in damnation are you? April Ryan, sir. Ryan? <laughs> doesn't sound very Northlandian. Are you by any chance from the coast of... You hold on. Ryan? April Ryan? <laughs> I'll be damned. You're from Stark. Apparently. Until today, I thought I was just from Earth. I had no idea there were two of them. <laughs> Takes you by surprise, doesn't it? Well, goddamn. Sit down, Miss Ryan. Let me get you a drink. The liquor over here stinks to high heaven. Magic pollutes the purity of the spirit, but I keep a bottle of Glenfiddich for special occasions. Thanks for the offer, sir, but I didn't come here to have a drink. Really? I see. This isn't a social call. No, sorry. Oh, no matter. It's still a pleasant surprise to meet someone from home. <laughs> now... <clears throat> What may I do for you? I have a delivery for you. A delivery? When did the U.S. Postal Service start delivering mail to Arcadia? It's from the map merchant at the market. It's just a map. Oh, good. I've been waiting for you. Well, hold your horses. What are you doing working for the Guild? Are you planning on staying in Mercuria? I'd strongly advise against it, Miss Ryan. Arcadia may look like a pastoral fairy tale realm, but it's not. You bleed as easily here as you do in Stark, and magic can do more damage than a gun. I'm not planning on staying, but I had to find you. The map merchant was the only one who knew where you lived, and he wouldn't tell me. So I got him to hire me, and you were the second delivery on my list. Dear gods. Carrick and his misguided loyalty. I'll have a word with the man. Thanks for the map, though. I collect them. There's not much else to do in this godforsaken city. Cortez told me to look you up. He did, did he? I see. <clears throat> Who's Cortez? You don't know him? I think not. I'd certainly remember. Did, did you say Cortez? Y you wouldn't be talking about old Manny Chavez, would you? Well, he ought to be dead by now, but then, by all rights, uh, <laughs> so should I. <laughs> I don't know his first name, but he calls himself Cortez. Tall fella, mysterious and elusive, rarely answers a question with a simple yes or no. Smokes like a chimney? Aside from that bit about smoking like a chimney, it sounds exactly like Cortez. Manny. I'll be damned. That old crook is still around. Well, how the devil is he? He's good. Where do you know him from? Oh, my old life back in Stark. We had some exciting adventures, him and I. Actually, he's part of the reason I ended up here. I last saw him in the winter of 1934. But that's almost 300 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? And I'm sure he doesn't look a day older than he did back then. The handsome devil. <laughs> Well, if I'm going to accept magic in parallel worlds, I might as well accept people living 300 years. Oh, no, you misunderstand. <clears throat> I'm only 46. I arrived here about 15 years ago, but I, I left Stark in 1934. Between the worlds where you dream, time has little meaning. I was trapped, you see, for, for quite a while. For 300 years? Time went by pretty fast. It didn't seem so bad at the time, but now that you mention it, 
Three hundred years. Quite disconcerting, really. Quite disconcerting. Cortez said to look you up when I wanted to go back home. To Stark. Now, why would he say that? I'm not a shifter, and I, I don't know any magic. I'm sorry, Miss Ryan, but you'd be better off asking the Sentinel Priests for assistance. Already did. They said I was on my own, that they couldn't help me. Bloody typical. Those reactionary fools wouldn't extend a hand to help a drowning man if it violated the principles of their bloody balance. But I can't think why Manny would tell you to visit me in order to shift home. It just doesn't make sense. How did you end up here in Mercuria? <laughs> That's quite a story. I won't bore you with the details, but suffice it to say, I was always somewhat of an adventurer. The promise of virgin territory untouched by civilization held great sway with me in my youth, as did the idea of a highly spiritual state of mind. The occult, magic, karma. I was born in 1902, in Boston. By the time I was 17, I'd put that life behind me. I spent the next three years at sea, and then I wandered around Europe for a time. In the early 30s, the 1930s of course, I found myself in India, working as a journalist. That's where I met Manny, and that's where I first heard of Arcadia. I was amazed and quite skeptical at first, but the thought of a whole new world to see and magic? <laughs> I was a fool, of course, but who knew where my curiosity would bring me? So what happened in India? I've tried to forget about it, to be honest. If I could go back and convince myself not to... Oh, but I still wouldn't have listened, of course. The unknown tracks. I ended up in Tibet in the winter of 34, wading through snow up to my chest, thinking for sure that this was it, and I was going to die. Manny pulled me out of that one, thank God. I spent three months in a monastery before pushing on into the void. There's only one way for a non-shifter to pass through the divide. And it's not an easy road to take. Now, if you don't mind, <clears throat> I'd prefer not to talk about the past anymore. There's more than enough to worry about in the present. I should get going. Very well. You're welcome back at any time, Miss Ryan. Any time. Thank you, sir. I'll remember that. Sign this, please. It's just to confirm that I made the delivery. Certainly. It's Brian Westhouse's signature. Hello, Mr. Westhouse. Back again so soon, Miss Ryan? I should get going. All right. Hold on one second, Miss Ryan. I just remembered something. It's such a long time ago, I'd almost forgotten, but Manny did give me something that might be of interest. What is it? It's a pocket watch. Manny gave it to me the last time I saw him. I never quite understood why, but maybe you can tell me. Did he say anything about it? He said that when his heart started beating again, he would know. It would be like a message in Morse code, a beacon. Damn watch never worked, and the winding mechanism is broken, so it's Probably not worth much. You're welcome to it, if it's any help. 
Thanks. It's an antique pocket watch. It's not ticking. The knob used for winding the watch seems to have broken off, and there's only a tiny hole left. I insert this pin carefully into the hole, like so, and then slowly wind it. It worked! It's ticking! I did it! It's a shift! I can go home! By God, it's a shift. I haven't seen one for ages. Why don't you come back with me, Mr. Westhouse? You could say hello to your old friend, Manny. If I tried to step through that, Miss Ryan, I would suffer a most unpleasant experience. And I would be lost in the between forever. Besides, I built this house with my own two hands. I wouldn't want to leave it to these barbarians. And what does your Stark have to offer me? This world is more recognizable to me now. Now you go ahead, Miss Ryan. And go back. And don't let your curiosity of the unknown tempt you into making another shift. Thanks for your help. Say hello to Manny for me. Tell him... Tell him I'm doing all right. And then I said... Thanks. Oh, God, it's real. It's all true. I saw it. I saw the other world. Arcadia. Either I'm going crazy, or you were right about everything. Hey, let's hope for the latter, eh, mi amiga? So I gather your trip was a success. Success? My whole world has been turned topsy-turvy, so I don't think success is the right word. Nothing about it makes sense. The fact is, I don't believe in magic. The sun does not need you to believe in it to rise in the morning, senorita. You have seen the truth with your own two eyes. I can do nothing more to convince you. It is up to you now. Well? Do I have a choice? I have to believe at least some of it. My life wouldn't make much sense otherwise. You are a true skeptic, April. Está bien. We need your kind to balance the hopeless romantics like myself. What happens now? The Minstrom told you about the balance. About Stark and Arcadia. A man named Tobias? He was called the Vestrum, I, I think. Vestrum Tobias. Ah, so Tobias made Vestrum que bien good. I knew he would go far when I first met him years ago. He was just an instrument then, a student of the balance, but he was smart and resourceful. So you know what is going on with the balance. Tobias told me that the... Guardian? That the Guardian was missing, and that the balance was failing. He said this would bring chaos into both worlds. As we are already seeing, your dreams, your nightmares, they are part of these. You sense chaos more keenly than most. But even they are beginning to notice that things are not as they should be. Like last night. What about last night? What you saw. You were not alone this time. There were others. And they saw the same thing. Not nightmares anymore. Real. The first sign of the damage chaos can do. The divide is being breached. It is not yet time for the worlds to be united. A breach could prove catastrophical. Who are you really, Cortez? Excuse me? People knew you, over there in Arcadia. Tobias. He didn't know you by your real name, but he did know you. And Mr. Westhouse, he knew you too, as Chavez. But several hundred years ago. 
So my secrets are being revealed, are they? I wouldn't say that, because you're still a mystery to me. More so. Good. You see, senorita, mystery is important. To know everything, to know the whole truth is dull. There is no magic in that. Magic is not knowing. Magic is, is wondering about what and, and how and where. I'd settle for the truth, just to be able to know you. Because, uh, honestly, I don't mean this in a bad way. You scare me, Cortez. I'm afraid of you. And you are not the only one, mi amiga. I'm sorry, but whatever it is about me that mystifies you, it will have to stay a secret. There are... there are things even you should not know. Gee, thanks. That really helped. Perdóname. Perhaps later, when we are certain of what the future holds, okay? I think I can promise you that, Senorita Ryan. Later. But for now, we must speak of more important matters. You helped me back, didn't you? To shift? See? The power is yours, yes? But for now, you need me to focus your powers to call forth your dreams. Dreams? Yes. To travel from one world to the next, you must pass through the world of dreams. It is the only way. You are capable of opening a shift on your own, but you might not be able to. What do you mean? The power. The magic is within you. And when you sleep, sometimes you open the portal without even being aware of it. But when you're awake, it's more difficult. With practice, you will do it. I don't think I want to do it. You must. The worlds depend on it. So what do I do? We must work together, April. I can't do it alone, and neither can you. But what exactly is it that we have to do? Four things. We must find the Lost Guardian, we must locate the gateway to his realm, and the disc that is the key to his tower, and we must do what we can to curtail and defeat the Vanguard. How are we going to find the Guardian? The moment he surrendered his throne and left his realm, he stepped back into our world, this world, Stark. This is where he was born, and so this is where he must return to. But he could be anywhere, right? This city has power, April. Not magic, but the opposite of magic. And it draws people to it like flies to an open fire. All the pieces of the puzzle come together here. You, me, the Vanguard, the Guardian. I can guarantee you that he's here. But where exactly, I do not know. I think maybe the Vanguard do. I think they may have him. If they have him, how are we going to get him back? And why do they need him? Why do we need him? He left his realm, but he's the last Guardian. And only he can open the doorway back to his realm to let his successor through. The Vanguard knows this, but what they don't know, yet, is how to get there. Who'd know about the gateway to the Guardian's realm? That, I do not know. That knowledge wouldn't be here in Stark. You must go to Arcadia, study the books, talk with the Minstrom and others who might know, but not yet. First, we must finish our mission here. Where is the key to the Guardian's realm? In Arcadia. The key contains two parts. One is the disc itself. The other is the four jewels. The eyes of the dragons. That gives the disc the properties of the balance and makes it complete. Where is the disc? The disc was left in the care of the Sentinel 10,000 years ago. In the beginning, it was kept in the open, displayed for all to see. But not anymore. Not since thieves tried to make away with it. They will know where it is. Ask Tobias, Vestrom Tobias. Where are the four jewels? Ah, the eyes of the dragons. They are kept by the four dragons themselves. 
two in Arcadia, and two in Stark. The White Dragon has one, as does the Old One. These you must find yourself. I'll help you with the others. How do we defeat the Vanguard? The Vanguard are strong here, and growing stronger. Even in Arcadia, they are gaining a foothold. And with that tyrant on a leash, the future looks quite bleak. How do you know so much about what's going on in Arcadia? Voices whisper in my ear, Senorita. Voices that I trust. You're saying the Vanguard are strong here. How come I haven't heard about them? They don't go by that name here. Did you ever hear of the Church of Voltec? Sure. They're... Oh, that's the Vanguard? See. Si. Then they're big. Very big. But why do they... Why assume a different name here? In Arcadia, they flaunt their philosophy. They preach the destruction of the balance under the pretense of returning humankind to the glories of the past. Here, they cannot do that. So they have integrated themselves slowly but surely into society under the subterfuge of the New Age religion. And they've built a financial empire to match governments. They have that much money? The Vanguard own multinational companies. They own planets, April. They own armies. All they need is the balance, and they will own everything. The twin worlds will be at their mercy. So, we basically don't stand a chance, do we, against an enemy like that? If we hold at bay the forces of chaos, and if we ensure the natural continuation of the Guardian's role within the balance, then they will have lost. How are we supposed to fight this chaos you keep talking about? You're the key, April. You have the power to shift, yes? But there's more to you than that. You are a child of the balance. And you... No, that will have to wait. By just being alive, you counter chaos. Without you, last night might have turned out much worse. That tiny breach might have been permanent. I didn't do anything. And imagine the power you wield when you really do something. Trust me on this, Amiga. It's instinctive to you to fight chaos. You see it so clearly, and you will know what to do. You are most needed in Arcadia, where chaos is a part of reality. The tidal wave will hit there first, and unless it's subdued before it hits Stark full force, we'll never stand a chance. So you will have to travel to Arcadia, after we are done here. Okay, so that's it? Kick some Vanguard ass, find the Guardian, locate the entrance to his realm, and a 10,000 year old disc and four dragon eye jewels? And oh, April, make sure you do battle with the physical manifestations of chaos along the way, because hey, that's your destiny. It's impossible, Cortez. I can't do these things. I'm 18, I'm an artist. No, not even that. I'm nobody. You can't place all these responsibilities on my shoulders. I can't carry that much. I will help you, April. Others, too. You're not alone. Well, I feel very alone, and I can't even tell anybody about this. Yeah, hi. How are you? I'm the Chosen One. Can you help me save the world from evil and chaos? There is no Chosen One, April. There are only those who would and those who wouldn't. You have a choice between the two. You said I had powers. That I wasn't like everybody else. True. But you still have a choice. Prophecies can never unravel the will of a single human. You are one of many possible paths. But unfortunately, most of the alternative paths have been blocked by... ...circumstances beyond our control. The world does depend on you. But you have not been chosen. You choose for yourself what you are, and what you will be. What happens if I choose no, no way? I am not a fortune teller, nor am I a Venar. What will happen? Something else? That's all I can tell you. Something else. But I'm sure it won't be anything good. 
Not unless you agree to help. But I can't do it. I'm not who you think I am. I'm not your savior. I don't have any magic powers. I'm just this girl. I'm just me. The choice is yours, April. As always, the choice is yours. It's not much of a choice, is it? For what it's worth? Perhaps not. Still, you need to come to the decision on your own. Then the choice will have to be... Yes, let's save the world. Where do we start? Here, in Newport. We must find out about the Vanguard. Their headquarters are in this city. But where? Do they have the Guardian under lock and key? What are their weaknesses? Once we've done that, you must travel to Arcadia. I cannot go there, and besides, I have things to take care of here. Right. Except, where the hell do I go to find out about the Vanguard? The library? The net? Valuable information is hard to find. Remember the painting I showed you yesterday? Sure. The artist. A boy named Warren. I told you about him, yes? Warren is involved in a lot of activities that, um, aren't exactly legal. He has connections. He can point us in the right direction. All right, okay. Where do I find him? My friend, Father Raul at the Hope Street Cathedral, he's had some contact with the boy lately. Ask him. Wait, did you say Hope Street? Yes. As in the most dangerous neighborhood in Newport? Is it? <laughs> I don't usually follow the civic affairs of the city. I remember Hope Street when they first built it. A clean neighborhood. That must have been a very long time ago. Still, I'm sure you'll be safe. You're a girl, no? A self-respecting gentleman would never harm a girl. It's the self-respecting gentleman part I'm concerned about. Still, I can handle myself. Father Raoul, was it? At the Hope Street Cathedral? Yes. He will lead you in the right direction. Help you find Warren Hughes. When you're done tomorrow, we will meet up at the Cathedral late in the afternoon. I need to speak with Raoul as well. Okay, good. It's a plan then? Enjoy yourself tonight, April. Who knows what the future may hold? Good night.
traveling long hours today, Charlie? Unfortunately, yeah. Are you staying for the show tonight? What show? You don't know who's playing? I've had a... lot of things on my mind these past few days, Charlie. Sorry. Anybody good? Anybody good? Are you kidding? Roy and Dale's playing. It's the first gig on their new tour. Sort of returning to their roots before they do the big venues. Tonight? Great, that's perfect. Especially tonight. I need some serious unwinding. Yeah? What's up? I just had the weirdest experience of my life. Weirder than last night? Who told you about last night? Fiona. And I told her about what happened here. What do you mean? What happened here? You don't know? It was another one of those weirdest things ever incidents. But it sounds so much like what happened to you guys. It happened around 11 last night. I was behind the bar, and I couldn't see how it started. But when the music changed... Something, it wasn't human or not like any human I've ever seen, appeared, materialized, from the jukebox. It was playing an instrument, and at first it didn't seem to notice anyone. Then, when it did, it suddenly disappeared again. I mean, everyone saw it. Everyone. And everyone was just staring at the jukebox, and then at each other. And then things sort of returned to normal again. It was like they all chose to block it out. It was really scary. That sounds like what happened back at the house last night. But Charlie, it could have been... I don't know, mass suggestion or perhaps gas rapture? Even a hologram. Why is that easier to accept than the alternatives? You mean that we're all going crazy? Or that something really is happening? Like an opening between dimensions and stuff leaking through? You'd rather believe that? I believe there's more things under the sky than science can explain. To me, that's a better explanation. I can accept a mystery. Charlie, I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to believe anymore. So what's this thing you were going to tell me about the weirdest experience of your life? You wouldn't believe me anyway, Charlie. Try me. No, really, I can't. It's too much, too close. I don't know if I believe it myself. Okay. You tell me about it later then, all right? Maybe. Is Emma around? Haven't seen her. She knows about the show, so she'll be here. When does the concert start? In less than an hour. I expect the place to be crowded soon, so you should find yourself a spot to sit down. Thanks, Charlie. No problem. Later. Day. You didn't show up at school, you weren't at work, and then Fiona tells me you're out looking for Cortez again, and on top of that, Zack brags about bagging a date with you. What's up with that? Oh, shit. Zack, I totally forgot. He's gonna kill me. If I don't show up, that is. You mean it's true? You have a date with that asshole? I told him he was full of shit. I needed some information. <laughs> And you sell yourself to get it? April, you're insane. Well, you're just going to have to disappoint him. I made a promise. <laughs> to that sleaze bag? That's a promise made to be broken. You're right. I'm staying here. Good girl. Now, there are a couple guys you should keep an eye open for tonight. Me? I have a boyfriend. You need a boyfriend. You need a boyfriend because I have one and I need somebody to compare boyfriends with. It's not your choice to make, girl. It's just the natural order of things. I thought we were here to listen to the band. Sure. From the back. So we can scope out guys' asses. I don't know which place is weirder. 
Mercuria, or the Fringe Cafe on any given night. Mark what? Never mind. So, okay, which guys are we looking for? Right. Now, you may want to take notes. 